Hi everybody, Carl here, KE0JWK. Uh, so before we get started uh, really into this uh, 20, 40, 75, and 160 meter trap dive pole build, um, I just wanted to, to give you a little background on a couple of things. Uh, it'll, just in case I mention other versions uh, um, in the build, the way you'll uh, kind of understand what I'm talking about. Uh, I may have told you in the last video, if not, I'll tell you now, this is my first time um, to get serious about building traps and my first time modeling them in 4NEC2. Um, that being said, there was a quite a learning curve there and uh, it's really not that hard once you get uh, get a, a general understanding of, of how you have to do it. Um, so I ended up with 18 versions of this antenna. The first 15 were my learning curve. Um, version 16, and by the way, each of those had hundreds of variations, whether manually by me or uh, via the optimizer in 4NEC. Um, anyway, version 16, um, the traps are tuned at the low end of the of the of each band. Um, and uh, version 17, they are also tuned to the low end of each band. Uh, the difference, the main difference between those two antennas is um, version 17, the trap inductors have less inductance than version 16, uh, which lengthened um, the antenna wires themselves, uh, hence giving it a little better efficiency. That's the biggest difference between them. There's smaller differences, but I'm not going to go into that here because I'm building version 18 uh, in this series of videos. Um, what I did different was I'm not space limited. Um, and by the way, speaking of space limited, version 16 was 124 foot 6 inches long, if you see it there. Um, and I'll try not to flip this back and forth too much. I know it's irritating when you're watching it. But uh, uh, version 17 was 133 feet long. You'll see that right there. And version 18 ended up at 155 feet long. Now the big difference between uh, the other prior versions and version 18 is version 18, the traps are designed to be on the high side of each band. Um, uh, a little less inductance in the uh, traps uh, than version 16 was and um, lengthened the wires out end to end it's about 155 feet long um, but the biggest difference is the efficiency um, by doing doing it this way um, now when I talk about efficiency and I also have to mention that that's per the modeling program, which in my case, I've, I've shown uh, that 4NEC2 has been pretty accurate for most stuff uh, that I have done with it, um, whether it be wire sizes or efficiency and, uh, you know, patterns. I don't have a real good way to, to test the patterns, but anyway, um, the, uh, we're out to 155 feet long. Uh, but the efficiency is up to 92%, which means um, that forgetting about coax losses or feed line losses, if you were to actually put 100 watts into the antenna, you would be getting 92 watts being radiated out into the atmosphere. So I'm doing version 18. Uh, like I said, the big difference, traps are tuned to the high side of each band. Um, for instance, for 20 meters, uh, these traps are tuned to 14.5 um, megahertz. Um, and uh, I tried to keep everything pretty consistent through the antenna uh, model. Um, the, uh, the tools that I used uh, primarily were 4NEC2, Coil32. Um, let's see, uh, I've got a, uh, um, a converter program that I use. Um, that uh, just to make it quicker and simpler for me to uh, to go back and forth between the, the coil program and uh, and putting the info into the NEC models um, because for me the uh, the coil 
seems to, to be most accurate when you do it in uh, picofarads and microhenries um, as opposed to when you put the info into 4NEC2 you need henries and farads so um, I just use that kind of as an in-between and I can convert everything I'm gonna do a little scroll in here so if that bothers you close your eyes a second <laughs> okay so version 18 here's a screenshot of the um, the frequency sweep on it. Um, I think the, the my as far as SWR goes, my worst is going to be on 160, and that's just right at a two to one SWR. Um, now, being a trapped antenna, um, there is pretty narrow bandwidth the lower you go in frequency, um, but uh, it's still very usable, especially if you're running any kind of a uh, uh, a matchbox alongside it, which I always do, even though, uh, like with my fan dipole, I I don't usually need it for much, but it's in line there, and uh, I'll keep it with this. By the way, I'm not building this antenna because I'm space limited. Um, I just want to replace my fan dipole with something else. Um, I may uh, end up leaving them both up in the air. I don't know, but I'm probably going to take the fan down and put this right in its place. Um, yeah, there I've got uh, uh, the patterns in the, the spec info uh, on each end uh, on each band um, over here on the right you'll see that's the the current distribution for each band um, that's version 16 uh, this document I've got together here I've got uh, all the info for version 16 17 and 18 in this document I'm figuring out a good way to get it to anybody that wants it um, as somebody suggested uh, that I start using Patreon, I don't know, I've never messed with it. Um, I guess you can do file uploads and downloads in there. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention, uh, here's the structure of the antenna. Um, other, than some, other than the lengths and the trap specs, it's going to look the same in the modeling program. Um, down here we have um, the capacitor. I'm building my own capacitors for this. And... Um, I'll go through it a little bit right now so that you've got an understanding when you're watching uh, watching the build of how I'm doing it. Um, the outer part is three quarter inch uh, copper tubing uh, or copper pipe. Uh, the inner part is three eighths OD copper tubing, and in between them sets a piece of half inch CPVC uh, for the dielectric. Um, the reason I chose CPVC is because it fits inside the three-quarter copper and the three-eighths OD um, tubing fits inside of that uh, as opposed to uh, if I would have used just regular white PVC um, the, there was some fitting issues there so CPVC it is um, in this document uh, and I can get it to you we'll figure out some way to get it to you if you want it or need it the uh, I've also got a uh, reference to RF Cafe in here, which gives the di dielectric properties of a lot, a lot of materials. They've got a really long list there. So, what you need to do your calculations if you're using anything other than what I am. But the reason I chose to build my uh, capacitors like this is because to keep them out of the weather, they're actually going to go inside my coil form, uh, which depending on which band we're talking about is a different it's they're each different uh, size pvc the white pvc um i think i used inch and a half on the uh, 20 meter traps um i'm using two inch on the 40 meter traps and three inch on the 80 meter 75 meter traps um and during the build just so you're not confused um, sometimes I refer to um, the 80 meter band 75 meters, sometimes 80, sometimes I'll say 75, 80, you know. Um, everybody refers to it as something different, and I understand why, because this is realistically, it's a 75 meter band. Um, some people are persnickety about what you refer to it as, but so I've tried to get myself in the habit of saying 75 meter, but it is... Um, all of these are going to be tuned for uh, the foam portion, um, according to the ARRL 
Michael's uh, recommendations. So just so you know what we're building here. Uh, doesn't mean you can't build this same antenna and uh, and tune it a little different, you know, if you're uh, um, an extra class uh, and have more uh, capability or all you want to do is CW, you know, you can, you can tweak this right in uh, on your own to any portion of the band you want and uh, that's mostly going to affect 75, 80 um, and uh, the 160 areas where the bandwidth gets pretty narrow. Um, let's see what else did I uh, want to show you guys here okay so there's there's the caps I'm building um, like I said I just described them there we've got the 3 8 OD inside the CPVC and the 3 quarter inch tubing or uh, pipe on the outside um, and then uh, oops wrong direction Go back. there is what I'm looking for so this is a quick just pencil drawing basically of the coil form which is going to be different sizes for the different bands um, here's the windings and this will be sitting inside of it I am going to use pipe caps on this I'm going to use um, the, uh, the test caps uh, they fit inside the end of each side uh, pipe as opposed to a regular PVC pipe fitting type uh, cap which goes on the outside but uh, so my inductor wire is going to come down I'm going to uh, uh, bring it out the ends of the pipes I'll just put the uh, appropriate holes in those end caps um, this red wire right here is the capacitor wire it'll connect in there so the, this will be a uh, bare wire and I'm, I'm using uh, uh, strand or a solid THHN uh, uh, number 12 wire for the, uh, for the inductors um, but this will take place inside of there. I'll leave enough outside to make this loop, which this gray wire here, and if you see it on the other end, is the antenna wire itself. Uh, those will hook together and be soldered. You know, uh, that's probably not exactly how I'm going to hook them together, but you get the idea. It was just for, for uh, to show you guys, uh, so you knew what I was building. In case something on the build video is difficult to. Um, uh, to see um, now please if you guys have any questions uh, on any of these uh, on this build or on this video or any videos are there something that you specifically as I'm doing the build uh, want me to address uh, please put something in the comments down below um, hit the subscribe button hit the bell button so you get notified uh, um, for the next video and uh, uh, here shortly I'm going to get uh, get on with the actual build but there was a few things here that I wanted to show you just because it may not be clear in the build videos uh, 